Okay, so this video is about a new receptacle being put in for a space heater. Uh, a family had somebody move back into the house and they're using the second floor bedroom as kind of like their own makeshift apartment somewhat. And so they plug in a space heater that draws over 1500 watts. So we decided to run a new circuit just for the heater. Um, because she had some other stuff that she put on the same circuit, the lighting circuit up there in a, in a bedroom, which of course isn't designed to handle a microwave, a plug-in space heater, and a refrigerator. So my suggestion to her was to run a new circuit just for the portable heater, since that seemed to be the most pressing issue. Uh, this bedroom is actually above a garage, and you'll see in a moment we got to run conduit on the ceiling of the garage and drill down into the space and open up a piece of the ceiling in the garage to be able to access where I'm working up above here. So not the simplest of jobs, it's a new build and sometimes you never know what you're gonna find in there. Quite honestly, I feel like in an older house, you know exactly what you're gonna find. Uh, here, <clears throat> I just cut out this duplex receptacle and I drilled a hole down inside the wall uh, this was built with two by sixes, so these were built pretty well, and the insulation levels were really good here, I thought. Um, <clears throat> so once I drill a hole down and get it set up up there, I'm going to go downstairs into the garage and start accessing where I'm going to cut this hole in the ceiling so I can find the fish coming down from the receptacle I just cut out above on the second floor. And here I got my Franklin stud finder, which is pretty accurate. I would say 90% of the time it's money. Um, but here, once I opened this up, I discovered that there's actually trusses, which is actually good for me because I got a little more room to move my hands around and a lot more room for error. So I'm using the M18 hacksaw uh, to cut this double 5 8 sheetrock ceiling. It's fire rated. So I can gain access in there to find the snake from the receptacle up above. And then eventually from there we'll set up conduit all the way back to the panel for a dedicated 15 amp circuit, which will be good for 1800 watts at 120 volts. And once I found the snake, which to be honest with you, took me a little while. It was kind of a pain in the neck. Uh, the first hole that I made up there was actually too far away from where it needed to be to access the snake. Because right in front of the first hole that I made, the furthest one away, right in front of that was a micro lamb beam. And the snake was behind that. So I had to cut a hole, the second hole, closer to the camera here just so I can get my hand back in between the trusses and grab the snake. Once I had the snake in my hand, I was able to pull it through the first hole and attach the 14-2 to snake up to the receptacle or the cutout upstairs in the second floor bedroom. At this house, they have a Square D home line, 200 amp main lug only electrical service panel. I believe it's 30 circuits and I was there over the summer. I did wiring for an electrical vehicle that you might see later. That's that box right underneath the electrical panel there. Anyhow, um, so there it is. So there's only a few more circuits we can get to. There's three available. I'm going to use one, so there'll be two by the time I'm done. And what we'll do is we'll snake a piece of Romex up to a box up near the ceiling and attach that box to the outer stud on the wall there to attach the box without using toggle bolts or anchors. It's actually 
um, secured to the wall very, very well. So I'm drilling like a one inch hole here and I'm simply just pushing this wire down. There's no insulation in this wall and it'll come out towards the top of the electrical box here. And um, <clears throat> actually what I did here is I couldn't find it. So I pushed it up from the panel up to the hole I just made, which I usually don't do. Uh, this just this was just easy. You'll see here in a minute that the wire will be right there in front of that hole and I'll just use my needle nose pliers to pull the wire out of that hole so I can attach the box and then eventually start my PVC run. Once the box is attached to the wall, uh, then I can cut in the new wire into the panel. You see that white connector right there? That's designed to be put inside the panel without doing any damage to the seat, to the wall above the panel. Um, definitely new in the last three or four years, I imagine. And uh, they're real handy here for the work that I do, uh, doing old work such as this. So once the panel cover back on, is back on, the circuit breaker is in, it's off. I could start my PVC run. I, I must have not had the camera on when I did this, but a piece of PVC up there goes into an oven um, that warms the PVC so you can form it. And so right around here, I, this little uh, cutout from where the electrical panel is, I'm gonna go back up against the wall. So it's like a, maybe like a three or four inch offset, like a rolling offset, because I'll, I'll get a, attached to the ceiling here and start um, <clears throat> using that edge to drive screws to put in straps to hold the conduit to the ceiling. When I can, I like to do PVC right here on the table if I'm nearby. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this, <clears throat> a glue on this coupling right there so it's not so sloppy and then put the PVC coupling on and then go run over to the piece that needs it. This way I'm not up on a ladder doing the glue. Uh, I had a problem with PVC uh, in my younger years where I had a bad accident but that's for another video. Uh, so here's that oven I was telling you about. I'm not sure how hot it gets but it gets hot. And as you can see, I don't even need too much to bend this PVC, but you need to bend, you need to make it so hot so that it's a nice even bend without any kinks. Um, and, that, and the only way I can explain to you how to do that is with experience. Uh, you don't want to make it too hot where it burns, and you don't want to have it too cool where it really doesn't bend just yet, or you're going to have a wide radius 90. What you want to do is you want to warm that up so it kind of forms by itself like you just saw. And I guess that takes experience to... Um, get used to doing. It took me a while when I first started using this hot box, um, but I can't imagine being on a job and not having it now. So I battled with this PVC for a little while here, um, getting around this corner and attaching it to the frame of the garage door opener. Um, and what I like to do is I like to set it in place without measuring and then later on come back and butt up against the piece and mark it before cutting it and then couple in the pieces together. That's just how I found it to be easier. And with, when you're bending that hot pipe, when you're bending the PVC pipe, um, sometimes big pieces are harder to handle. So that's another element to why uh, I like to do it in short pieces. Anyhow, this is the hole saw for the LB going up into the uh, ceiling there. <clears throat> and this is the finished conduit run. Now I'm ready to pull the wire, uh, and so I didn't have a camera on again when I went out to my truck, but I basically just ran out about 20 feet of uh, number 12 green, white, and black, and I'm attaching it to the snake, and I will pull it through to the LB and make a splice for the receptacle on the second floor. Um, you'll see that I'm going to use these, thing called, these things called Wagos, which are new 
And here they are. And they're kind of expensive, but they're real easy to use. And they save time on labor. So once I strip the wires back right here, they open up, you clamp them down, and it's boom, boom, boom. Very quick and neat, too. Um, <clears throat> so some might argue that that splice isn't allowed in an LB. But as long as that LB has a cubic volume limit printed in it, you can do it. But this would be the maximum amount of wires you could do. You couldn't add more. Once we turn on that circuit breaker, we'll go upstairs and we'll check the receptacle. And she'll be ready to plug in that heater tonight. Thanks for watching.